All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, because I know you guys are going to be listening to this on the internet. YouTube land, SoundCloud land, internet land, Namrock podcast. I got very special guests in the house today. Fi Jester is here. Ooh. What's up? Hello there. How y'all doing? Hey. We're doing good, doing man. Good. So, um, Cliff, how, how are you, man? I haven't seen Cliff in a minute, dude. Like, I think the last time I saw him was like... Long time dude, ago, Dude, before bro. you got married, man. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Oh, wait, except for the fact that I saw you four days ago. Oh, And that yeah. was the last time I saw him. <laughs> oh, my God. But before that, that's like a month. It's yeah. been a minute. Oh, and then there was that. And one I don't. Time I, I, I seldom ago. see Jaime because Jaime is like the fucking vagabond and shit. Ninja, ninja. So what's up? What's what's new? What's going on? Well, let's in, let's start off by introducing you, you guys. Everyone needs to know who you guys are. So I already spoiled the beans with spilled the beans with Cliff. So Cliff, why don't you introduce yourself, man? My name is Clifford Carl. I am a drummer. Clifford Carl. Wow. That is awesome. That's and an awesome are. middle name. <laughs> <laughs> Most people don't have Carl for a middle yeah, name. Yeah, I was named after Carl Winslow. Really? No, my grandpa. <laughs> were you were you playing Carl of Duty? Carl. You know what's funny? When I tell people my name sometimes, they think I say Carl, like half of the time. Hey, how's it going, Carl? No, it's Kyle. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Keith, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Edward. By the way, this is uh, this is Kyle Guerrero of Vigester. And what do you you play the guitars and vocals? Oh, uh, I thought you played that. But if you're listening to this, you probably know that. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> but also with us today is Mr. Jaime Salas. Jaime, give it up. What up? Let's give it up for for Jaime. How are you? Give it a jazz clap. It's, it's Thanks good for to being see here. You. Yeah, but give yeah, the old yeah, one baby. Too. Yeah, baby. I need to hear that. <laughs> play those skins, baby. Do that. Okay, so just to let you guys know, um, we've been doing this for off and on a year. I think the last podcast I actually did was with Kyle. It was a while back. It was a while ago. But I yeah, brought you guys like a here. Year ago, dude. No, it wasn't that long. Okay. It was about. <laughs> no, it wasn't get that your long. Times right but now. anyway, um, I'm here to um, actually hype up Vigester for uh, all of Internet Land. They actually went back to the studio at Pinnacle College. In Alhambra, um, which also happens to be my alma mater, uh, great school, great audio, audio school to attend. Um, and just to let you guys know the synopsis of what happened, um, you guys actually volunteered, man. That was pretty fucking badass. I, I appreciate that. You guys give yourself a round of applause for that. Man. Well, how could we... It was perfect timing for us, you know? How could we pass, pass that, that opportunity, man? Well, we, we feel very lucky to have been a part of that experience, you know, working with Dan Heck... And uh, yeah, Nathan right. Staley. With, you guys got to work in Nathan, too. Oh, my God. Yeah. with I mean, not only just fantastic producers and sound engineers, but all the best equipment. You know what I mean? Those are the all best the best studios. resources. And they make mean oh. Fidel. Definitely. Ooh. <laughs> well, all I have to say is, is that Dan Heck, um, you know, although it did take some time for him to set up the kit, even though we had a lot of really cool, you know, yeah. cats helping us out and, and setting it up, all the all the students... Um, he set up the one of the fattest drum sounds I've ever heard. Yeah, it sounded killer. the The whole thing is, if uh, it's just like photography, like if you capture it well the first time, um, then you're not gonna have to do so much uh, in the post process. That's but right. you can because it sounds great. Good composition. It's already uh, nine volt batteries, high man. <laughs> For those of you who don't know what happened, (laughs) (laughs) you're talking talking about the issue with the bass. Swelling. There was a lot of swelling coming from my bass. But we found out the problem, and it wasn't the 9-volt battery. Well, we really don't know what it was (laughs) where, right? (laughs) What happened was one of the students, we don't know who, uh, routed... Uh, double routed the monitor section to one (laughs) speaker. Damn it, Derek! And what we were hearing is a speaker limiting... Um, 
so it won't overload. Okay. And I'm assuming, okay, it's probably coming from the base itself. That was the weirdest thing, man. But I, was, I had you change the battery anyway, just in case. No, yeah, it's a good not? idea, man. We had the battery just switch it out because that was getting frustrating. We were killing a lot of time trying to figure out what the yeah. hell was. The I thought it was base. just nervous aura when I'm playing. I'm like, God, they just need to get something else. Because <laughs> it sounded here. like Clifford's kick drum was side chaining the uh, the bass, kind of like an EDM track. Okay, that's what it's sounding. Like. I don't well, know. That's if what, you that's heard what it we're trying monitors. to go for actually recently. So we should have just kept it. Yeah, I was kind of trying to get that DJ Steve Aoki vibe. <laughs> you trying to sound like that Jag U? Kind of sound like that Jag U? Never heard of him. Remix every other day? It's just remix after remix. This is ridiculous. <laughs> anyway, we're going to cut to a song uh, by Vigester. Um, I don't know. I'll let you guys pick this one, man. You guys have a whole array of shit. This is... You want to debut the new one? Let's do it. Sure. Well, let's... Um Let's go ahead and talk about uh, radioactive. Wait a minute, you guys did radioactive. Yeah. Damn what? Did. You guys you remade it? it? Yeah, the Frank Sinatra classic. Oh yeah. shit! <laughs> radioactive. Let me tell you, radioactive ghetto. <laughs> Imagine Dragons um, recorded a song that uh, I really like the lyrics to. I'm familiar with them. And, as much as I hate K Rock now, and but. you know, I never really liked. K-R. I never really liked them at first, but I was um, a fan of their production. Okay. And I listened, you know, to all of their songs on, on their album, which is um, ex- an extremely successful album. I haven't heard their album, but I heard yeah, a couple of tracks. Yeah, they had like four yeah. singles on it? Four, four like singles? top, you know. Although I was impressed with their live songs. performance live with performances, uh, yeah. Kendrick Lamar yeah, at the Grammys. Was... I've never seen anything like that. So, But, I mean, this, this song in particular, I, I kind of had a feeling that I would be able to um, write cool guitar riffs to. Okay. And, you know, obviously it was wide open for Cliff to, to throw something awesome down because the drums are totally simple in that song. Wide open like Madonna. I mean, honestly, I don't even think in the whole song, I don't think there's any kind of like a hi-hat or ride or anything like that. I think it's just like a kick and a snare the whole time. So wow. so Cliff actually had a lot of um, liberty and freedom to get creative on this freedom. track. But we, uh, okay. we we sped it up, and the vocals are pretty much the same. It's just in a different key. Okay. And anyway, I'll stop talking about it. We can just go ahead and roll All right. it. Here we go. Radioactive by Jeff. Oh. Whoa, oh, I'm, whoa, oh, I'm free, oh, 
in my bones Straight from inside Okay, all I got to say is, wow. That is different. <laughs> okay, no, I liked it. I liked it. Don't get me wrong. We like different. I liked it. It was just something that I have not yet heard you guys do. Like a pop So, cover. Lucy, explain. It's different, Ricky. Is that what you're saying? Like, you haven't heard us do a pop I cover? I have Well, it's considered pop. Because yeah, it's pop totally. culture type of k rockish type of thing it's but you guys like, you guys you guys put your own spin on it kind of like how you guys did uh well i mean steve miller brand's not k-rock well, no, would have this been is that's K-Rock what i'm saying like i heard fly like an eagle will you guys have spin to it and that thought was pretty badass this is way like out of the realm of vi gesture that just fit the band anyway i was like nice i like it thank you okay cool. so tell me how did how did this come about were you guys listening to k-rock no i think actually it first came about uh my wife uh heard it and she said i want you to hear this new band i found i they have an amazing song i thought it was okay or whatever i told kyle about it he said he he wasn't sure if he heard of him but then like he's a teacher so he heard about it like in a few months because a student asked to learn it or whatever so he for those who don't know kyle is a master of the custodial arts at that point i had already heard on top of the world because a student had asked me to teach it to him it was on like fifa a soccer game or something yeah really and the xbox uh, people yeah and uh wow, okay so i had heard of imagine dragons but that song was way different well i would imagine the transition is a little bit more i wouldn't say it's tricky I would say you got you you have to force yourself to put your own spin on it because you're trying at the same time keep your I guess keep your persona as a band. You know you're right, and then still cover a fucking song that's that, being played on a mainstream. Right. That's the right. idea. Radio station. Yeah, that's we the, wanted to cover a song that was kind of current. You know, I mean, it's coming out. We're releasing this now, and this song was popular two years ago. But still, like, we just wanted to have a song that was kind of more modern. You know. And then do our own thing. Get, well, I like it. So it fit the yeah. fit I like it, it, you know. You Thank get you. people listening to like remixes or different things. It, it's like music just done a, a different way. Like <laughs> we're gonna do the dubstep version of uh, <laughs> Taylor Swift's, you know, Romeo and Juliet love story, but which I think uh, we'll be covering in about Fuck, a month. If I had a dime for each time I've seen that word or heard remix, be a filthy rich man, dude. That's all I see now. It's like fuck. Well, technically, you guys did do a remix. But the definition of remix now has taken a whole new like, I don't know. It's not. It's not what the word really means. There will be to me. some words in this song you may recognize. You know what a remix is? Okay, "Wait and Bleed" from Slipknot. Yeah, was mixed by Ross Robinson. It was remixed by Terry Date. Oh, I got you. Difference. Uh, I got you. Right? Yes, Terry Date Terry is Date's one, one of one my of heroes. So it's more of yeah. an engineering term. Yeah, I mean, me being an engineer, I I get it has the whole remix terms, thing. Though. To the average person, a remix means like a, almost like a techno version of a song, you know? Right. So if it's that, that's where it, there's a lot there's of kind different of a, uh, there's kind of a gray of the word. Yeah, makes sense. You, it just depends on the context. He's and just I, saying originally it started off as a, a remix. Is a, oh my interpretation of what was already recorded. Yeah, mm-hmm. meaning you preserve the actual recording and makes remix sense. it to your own. But now remix is like it's not even remixing, right? It's recomposing. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what, what it most is. People, Rearranging. Actually, most people think of remixing as recomposing, kind of. Yeah, because all all my EDM buddies, oh, it's a remix. I'm like, do you know very well that's no fucking remix? He's like, yeah, I know, but you everyone, s- everyone in the community calls it you that. You sample like, okay. that. 
I can keep hearing but the that's, chorus. Well, a technically times. speaking, because truth be told, man, I know some some of these EDM guys, and they're very fucking talented. No bullshit. They're actual Berkeley School of Music graduates. They have to audition to get into the fucking school, and they're badass. But they just they know where the market's going, and they're like, what I'm ultimately saying is that's that song was badass. Damn it. <laughs> it needs to be out on the internet. People need Sweet. to hear this shit. Well, what, what you said about where the market is going, um, we thought that it would be cool to have something to play live, you know, because we're not going to put this on iTunes and try to make money right. off of it. You know, I mean, legally we couldn't anyway unless we paid royalties, but right. um, we wanted something cool to do live where we could show people um, our diversity because we do have a lot of different styles besides what we have on iTunes. The stuff that we have on iTunes is pretty much just one genre, but we're very eclectic. You know, we, we do acoustic songs. We do, you know, sometimes, I, I wouldn't call it pop, but we do definitely more accessible songs that aren't necessarily in right. the heavy metal genre or hard rock genre. But uh, this song is not necessarily reflecting our path as a band. Um, and what I'd like to talk about is uh, what we did at Pinnacle, you know. Well, sonically, that, I was going to ask you guys that. I mean, that mix sounds... Um, the, the Cliff, mix that? Yeah. Okay. That's a demo recording. That's a damn garage. good demo. Although, I must compliment you on the mix. Uh, yeah, reverting back to Pinnacle, there was a certain individual that's on the staff named Nathan, Nathan Staley. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's Staley or Staley. I can't pronounce his last name correctly. Yeah, he mixed it's this the third day, the day three of three. Right. Um what i wasn't there for that but what what did you notice uh that was unique and different from his style of of miking up a, a guitar rig um he introduced some different mics that dan wasn't using dan heck and um dan had a fantastic sound already and i don't understand what it was that nate did differently but immediately i liked it a little bit better as far as in the headphones and then right. when, we, when we went in there and listened to it i was like wow but what but what the difference was is i was listening to just one guitar take when uh dan had his mix right and then this and then that third day was when we added the other guitars so i heard nate's mix initially in my headphones i thought that was was really really awesome and then when we went in i heard what we recorded with Dan and then also what then we recorded with Nate and just the combination of what they both did was insane. Yeah. It sounded like it just a fury. You Nate, know. Nate is a product of uh, Dan Heck. Yeah, um, we feel which very is, lucky. To which is crazy because he, um, I, di I didn't get to get meant. I wasn't fortunate enough to be mentored by Nate, but he graduated, uh, I believe it was uh, maybe four or five years before I did. Um, he originally was at the Sound Masters uh, campus in North Hollywood. Remember, because Sound Masters came first. The founder was Brian Inglesby, who passed okay. away. R.I.P. Um, and they moved, they, they sold the school, and they renamed it Pinnacle College. So during that transition, Nathan made the move and gotcha. became a product of Alhambra. He wow. was probably one of the first ones, I think. What, what it was is we got an opportunity to record at your workshop. You know, you, yeah. you invited us, and uh, it was something that we were, to be honest, a little bit unprepared for. But we worked our asses off in July. Jaime Salas? Fucking worked our asses off. <laughs> Neglected family. <laughs> Tell the dogs just to walk themselves. <laughs> Tell your son to raise himself. Wow. Just and, get a, you know. Yeah, just we, and we, we did our best to uh, get the songs where they needed to be. You know, songs that one song hollow graffiti that wasn't even written right that we basically wrote in a month yeah and um and it turned out i think really really good now this song uh like i was saying before actually i do think is kind of reflective of the direction that i'd like to start taking with the band it's it's got a lot of everything in it it's got the uh the really cool driving um but groovy groovy uh verse it's got the uh the catchy chorus but it's still really heavy and we also show our versatility by being very artistic and experimental and and um, ambient in the breakdown. I, I thought to that away, but, yeah. Clifford's drumming was fucking impeccable, man. So Thanks, dude. I so, was like, damn, dude. Although, um, as much as he likes to pick on his own drumming, I know you do. Um, there were some takes that I felt like, well, I mean, it sounded okay. Um, 
and then I'm like, oh, he's probably going to think it's really bad. And then he'll just do another fucking take and just blow it out the fucking water. I'm like, dude, there's no stopping with this guy. And he'll come in like, hey, how was that? <laughs> and I'm like, did I do okay? Like, did you not hear what you played? Fuck. And I'm like, listen to this shit. Uh, even Dan was really impressed, man. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, I think it was uh, during during the tracking for Hall of Graffiti. There was like, you know, that roll after the bridge. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, for those of you who, have, who have, don't know yet, <laughs> this is really gnarly fucking um, I did 16th to 32nd note roll on the kick drum. It's and all triplets. It's like uh, it's some it's ass triplet thing. It's fucking tits. <laughs> it's it's McGee. Yeah, yeah tits. I'm like, it's tits something. McGee, man. It reminded me of some shit that like, you know, Danny Carey or fucking Joey Jordison would do, dude. Thanks, man. And Oh, you're welcome, bro. But... Um, Nonetheless, um, I think it was one one clean edit that that you you did with Dan Hick, and that was just you being Cliff, and it got done. It sounds sounds nice. Dude. It sounds awesome. Yeah. It came around good. Yeah, it was one of the coolest things we've done as a band so far, recording yeah. there. And we'll be finishing up vocals with um, with our original producer Danny Balistocki and uh, Zeus Wood as well. So and who did a uh, cognizance for those of you who haven't heard it? That's right. We'll be back at Revolution. Y'all need 9. to hear that. We'll be back at Revolution Nine in Hollywood to do that. So I'm really excited to finish up. And get so this Danny Balistaki and Zeus. What's his last name? Wood. Wood. Mm, at Revolution Zeus. Nine, and that isn't. It's L. A. Right? Or Hollywood? Hollywood. Santa Monica. Uh, Holly Weird. It's in the heart of Hollywood, actually. Yeah, Holly it's Wolf. Holly Weird. Holly Wolf. Holly. Rah. Rah. We're at Rah. right there by the Home Depot and Sunset. <laughs> But um, well, it's time for another jam, man. Uh, well, let's go to this next part with manifest acoustic. We haven't really revealed that either. You know what? Th- that's a really good idea. We we have another song that we've been kind of holding on to that we've been wanting to put out, and this is a perfect opportunity. So let's just do it. I it's didn't just expect basically it, but... an acoustic version of Wow. Uh, for of those our, who don't know, songs manifest. Uh, Cognizance is available on iTunes. And it is available on Google Play, so download that shit. It's good. Um, I would say stream it, but you know, I have this thing up my ass about streaming music. <laughs> uh, buy it, please. Support a motherfucker. Uh oh, that was a beer. That was a beer. They're drinking cheap beer for for Christ's sake, man. Come on, <laughs> they need more expensive <laughs> beer. Well, hold on. let me let me talk a little bit about this just really briefly before I go into it. Um, we wanted to kind of experiment like we always do with uh different takes on our own recordings we we like to remix not only other people's songs or recompose as you said we like to recompose our own songs so this is an acoustic version of manifest which is the opening track of last year's ep entitled cognizance all right ladies and gentlemen peep it out debut from the cognizance ep do it manifest acoustic I must pay Heaven seems to know To make an illusion Break your soul Since very young I've been this way Like a phoenix in the shade Glancing at the chance For me to For us to Just how far we have come Like the soul we've just begun Dance in a dream To manifest what I've said So now I am 
karma of a king Swaying in my trance I need to, we need to Dance in a dream Manifest from my head Oh no, this is never dead Chance is to see Just how far we have come Like the soul we've just begun Dancing a dream To manifest from my head So I got a question for Clifford. I can't believe you I sound bisa as fuck. <laughs> and you're not even speaking Spanish. Dude, that's, that's fucking you amazing. For freaking working at a restaurant for almost a decade. Hey. Oh, yeah. Cliff. 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 Oye. Oye. Mira. Oh, they call me Chiqui Lin. Tengo, tengo un celular. Look, I couldn't. They call me Chispolito. Donde esta mi tip? Those are my, I have so many nicknames at work, dude. Donde esta mi tip? Hola, I was trying to keep it together, but Cliff had these amazing hand gestures going on. <laughs> But you can't see you can't see him if you're listening. It was like I don't know where it was coming from. It was soul. It was all soul. But Cliff, what are those nicknames that they, oh, that they call man. you? Um, Chiki Lean, Chispolito, Chiki Ricky. So what do they call mean? you Chespirito? Yeah. Chespirito was like a, a comedian from really Mexico. famous like it was like a Mexican Benny Hill, dude. They told me it's a they, it was, <laughs> he was serious? fucking bad. Hey, they told me it's a compliment. Chapolin. Like, yeah, yeah, Chapolin. Chapolin. Benny Hill was funny. If they call you Chispolito, they're like, that's like an honor that you're funny. <laughs> <laughs> fucking royalty dick yeah dude He's, but uh, for those of you who don't know kyle was born here but he is of mexican descent that's correct but he's uh he's hulk hogan all the way dude <laughs> wow he thanks brother brother kyle is a real american clifford is, clifford is from the outskirts of oaxaca <laughs> Oaxaca. <laughs> I got a question for Jaime. Jaime, were you raised here or do you, you, your parents from Mexico? Sí, pero mi mi abuelo es son de Chihuahua. Mi mamá es de aquí. Y yo nací aquí en Glendora. Y luego es verdad, es serio. I was born in a General Hospital. I died in a Five Freeway in La Soto. 
<laughs> born here, man. Yeah. That, well, I was born here, too. And Beautiful. They, they, my mom took me to fucking Mexico when I was nine, so I could appreciate living here. But <laughs> it was the worst shit ever. Wait, dude. did she do the same thing where she packed up all your toys you didn't play with and made you give them to the kids? Yeah, dude. You and know what's funny? Anything, clothes, same shit. Shoes that didn't fit you anymore. And you mom. went there and met the family and gave them to them, watched them play with their toys. Yep. And then you lose all ego or sense of and like, like, that's mine. What the fuck? Like, Give me my fucking toys back, God damn it! I love like, that no, semi truck. No, 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 I'm like, oh yeah, fuck. Kyle went to the desert this weekend. Yeah, it's pretty windy. Why did you go to the desert? All right, this weekend. Who the fuck just? Oh, let's go to the desert, guys. Well, it, it was Joshua Tree, and it was pretty hot too. Um, we were at a little bit higher elevation than uh, Palm Desert, you know, because Joshua Tree, you take a you take a highway up north, and it goes up into the mountains about uh, 1,100 feet above sea wow. level so it's a little cooler but it's still freaking you know it's over 100 degrees i went out there to go to an event called contact in the wow. desert and i met giorgio sucalos the aliens guy the aliens guy and for those of you who don't know it's the guy on the internet it's a meme with George Sukulos in it, and it says aliens. That's right. Because they use his explanation. it for everything. Because his saying, explanation for everything is... I'm not saying aliens. And then women, but aliens. <laughs> That's my favorite one. But this was held at um, the Joshua Retreat Retreat Center at a place called the Institute for uh, Mental Physics. And uh, they had a lot of great speakers there. George Norrie was there, who's you know a big Ooh. radio guy, uh, AM 640, coast to coast. And AM he, 640. And he's got a lot of people th that he provides a, uh, uh, you know, an outlet for, you know, information of the um, kind of outside the mainstream. Yeah. That things of the, out of the norm. Yeah. The, uh, the underground nature, oh, scary. you could say. So uh, he was there, you know, being a host for a lot of the panels. They had panels. They had individual lectures. They had workshops. Wow, they had workshops and lectures. They had. Well, I mean, let's put it this way: the panel was basically, um, they had an auditorium which sucked because it was so hot. But they would have a bunch <laughs> of. Fuck. They would have one topic and a bunch of different experts, and also a couple of like semi skeptics, including Nick Pope. Nick Pope was uh, the director of UFO investigations for the MOD, which wow. is the, the, the Ministry of Defense. And so he, what the fuck? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah, he yeah, was yeah. a hardcore. Yeah. He was a hardcore skeptic, and he seems to be a little bit of a, a convert. But he maintains his skeptic outlook on things. But he's like a believer now for sure. So it's really important that they have him on the panel. So it's kind of like the agnostic of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So like, I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but I can't prove it. But I do, really don't know. But he, but he's good to have there because his approach is very methodical to the information. But anyway, long story short, it, you know, I was out there. It was hot, and uh, it was nothing but old white people, dude. It was cool, man. What did I say oh. in the beginning? Who goes out to Josh? Yeah. What did I say? <laughs> say white, white people. people. That's white all people it was. got to stay white. But it, it was also just because. I mean, Palm Springs, <laughs> Palm Springs in general, that whole area, Palm Desert. It's it, all retirees, it's all, right? Exactly. Yeah. But but also, who's also the people who are really interested in this kind of stuff and are going to go out there? Old people who don't give a fuck what other people think about them. Exactly. You know, they don't care. They're like... Clifford, are you going to be the, one look, of those old white dudes? Look, it's the hippie generation because... <laughs> it's the hippie generation because there was all this information in the 50s and in the 60s with the Roswell thing. It, the whole alien phenomenon was huge. Roswell. When they were young, when they were kids, and when they were when they questioned reality, and then it, it all got capped and it all got hushed for a period of like three decades, and now it's starting to come back to the foreground for you know whatever reason. Well, everyone knows with this whole shit going down with NSA, there's a lot of stuff that, yeah, it's yeah. been a, it's been hush hush for a lot. I remember we talked about this a while back. Actually, yeah. lies and deception that not, that song we were talking about. It's actually his lyrical content is on Edward yeah. Snowden. I like that. That's like a lot That's of right. classified documents. Things start getting released yeah. after so, yeah. such amount of time. Yeah. Like that, Speaking like, of Edward Snowden, I wanted to say like one of the things he just revealed recently is that the number one country that spies on us and is involved in the NSA scandals type stuff is Israel. Well, I mean, they that, spent the most that money goes without saying wow. promoting themselves. <clears throat> wow. I did not know that. It's yeah, um, it just got revealed about a week ago. That, um, He's really biding his time properly with this kind of stuff. He knows how yeah. the media works. Israel yep. spent the most money on um, in the media 
like providing a good image for themselves. Well, of course. Oh, I yeah. mean, here's the thing, though. I mean, it's a, it's a double standard for me with with that's that conflict that's going on there because uh, violence does not solve violence. Period. But at the same time, you have a right, every right to self defense on both sides. And of course, if someone's stuck in a line of fire, it happens on the streets, dude. Yeah, it's fucked up. But uh, over an ideology, I don't know, man. It's like, no, that's a red shirt. No, it's maroon. Yeah, dude. Israel, War. Israel that's, bombed a um a school, and freaking I, like killed so many kids. I I and here's about, here's like, the thing. A month ago? I like to hear uh, both sides at all times, and they're both wrong, man. Um, just one country's more advanced than the other. And that's Israel. Yes. And you know why? Because they have help from the U.S. You know, they've also de- overdeveloped their technology because they're pretty fucking smart people, man. Well, before we jump the gun here, I want to talk about the desert thing, right? Sure. Uh, and you mentioned Israel. Do you guys remember the 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 Dome of the Rock? That the light, the rock, yeah. that light that came over oh, the Dome of the Rock. Dude, it was like supposed to be like an okay. angel or something that I, just settled. Then, what's your opinion on that? Oh my gosh! Because it they happen in other places, so I'm thinking it was a post production gag, but for different de- angles, man, it looks pretty legit. I don't know. I haven't done. I haven't dwelled on it long enough to know if it was real. Because after you going to contact in the desert shit, um, you know, it wasn't a white dudes checking out that light. It was a bunch of kids. They all saw it and they caught it on video. Here's my take on that whole thing. Um, most UFO um, researchers know that the problem with UFO sightings and, and footage is, is that there's no um, corroboration, um, meaning multiple angles and really more. yeah, that's the main problem. They don't they don't have two separate angles or or witnesses from you know different ang- you know sides or whatever that are unrelated peoples because right. there's always a question of like okay they they work together so it is absolutely possible that you could have had um somehow a group that got together even though they both I think they both spoke two different languages right the people who who got the the footage and said well we know that this is the problem let's solve it by saying we are in two completely different spots and we don't know each other Right. You know, um, but it could be genuine. Absolutely. But let me just finish by saying the whole contact in the desert thing um, didn't necessarily um, rely on UFO witness right. accounts, although a big, big part of their evidence is UFO witness accounts from highly ranked um, military right. officers uh, pilots, right? Astronauts. Wouldn't the flight controllers too? Flight controller. <laughs> there's, the dude, there's there's blips that they have that recorded that they pick up. They don't always pick it up, but sometimes they did pick they it up. play them for you there? Uh, no, but Holy also shit, this just opened a can of worms for me, dude. Also, cosmonauts have been coming out recently too, and the thing is, is they had a couple of pilots that said, um, you know, basically what happens is we see these events and we see UFOs, right? And we know that they're intelligently flown craft, and now immediately has, after the incident, has, does the NSA know about this shit? I'm sure I, they do. I'm sure right? they do, but but they say as soon as we witness these events, yeah, we get back to base and we're welcomed with, um. Documents to sign swearing our secrecy. That for, is for life. fucking insane. That's dude. the control yeah. of information. It's right. Yeah, that's the whole thing. I mean, computers can hence Snowden leaking. If being, you not, if, it, he's in Russia, right? Is that where, where he's is at? he at now? I think it was in Cliff. Do you know where he's at? Yeah, where was go? it in uh, South South America? No, I'm pretty sure. Fuck, it might man, be we, Russia. I'm sure he's dude. He he talked he talked to Ted via remote. Fucking no broadband, way! Dude. Did he? Yeah, man, that shit was crazy. That is cool. So I don't know. I I'm not a skeptic of uh, unidentified flying objects because I did I tell you the story, Cliff? Because did, you I'll, love Mort. Uh, I broke my cell phone um, last year. Here's what happened: I was walking my dog outside. He's walking Chloe. She was taking her nightly poop. Um, I looked up to the sky and I saw two lights. And I know it's, I'm like, those aren't airplanes. So I ignored it. 
I kept looking. Um, then I saw three, and it looked like it was going to form a triangle. I'm like, okay, normally if it's three, it'll hover over if it's you know, a group of skydivers or lights. Um, they stood, and then they moved to the left. The minute I saw that, yeah. I grabbed my cell phone to take a fucking video. <laughs> I dropped it, and I cracked the screen. Oh, my God. But I, I recovered it. I'm like, fuck. I, when it hit the, the, uh, the, the, the camera button... 10% power, not enough power to power up the fucking camera. Of course. I was like, son of a bitch, dude. I'm just looking there. Like, it went left, right, and then disappeared. Coincidence or like, No, influence. obviously, obviously the alien sent a beam down. Not charge down. my goddamn phone. They sent a beam down to knock the, the phone out of your hand, and that beam took all the power I was like, ah, oh, you motherfuckers. That's Giorgio Tsoukalos' explanation. My dog's just taking a big-ass shit, just chilling with her. <laughs> I'm like, you have no idea what I just saw. But, but... Was it your um, your love of Mort and Mindy? Nano Nanu? Yeah, that has that oh, has oh man that has cut off your skin. Now we're and... getting some deep shit. If for all, all yeah. of you guys, I mean, rest in peace, Robin Williams, man. Today is a sad day, dude. I okay. Is ruled as a suicide, Jaime? How the fuck does that happen? Was he he was depressed, right? Look, um, a lot of things I know about comedians are people that. You know, bring jokes or make people laugh. A lot of times, man, they have a hard time. Uh, you know, like loving themselves. They lost self-deprecating humor. They're funny as shit. They they speak the truth. A lot of those people got a lot of stuff inside. A lot of depression, anxiety. A lot of them are serious. Huh? A lot of uh, they're serious. Like Steve it, uh, Martin, dude. <laughs> I I always think of like uh, like Mitch Hedberg, who was just an you know just would make these off the off the cuff. Uh, observations, quips about, you know, like fruit at the bottom, the yogurt, open it up, and it says, you know, keep trying and shit like that. <laughs> um, but oh, shit. but it's, uh, you know, just it's these people that have these observations about the truth in life, things that they see, they're the patterns they notice, the their reality, and it's like we get it because we, we feel it, we see it, but it's like a lot of times you get people who um, uh, are funny to us, but they have a lot of demons, they have a lot of skeletons, they got things that they don't deal with that they can't because they have a responsibility to keep us laughing. Exactly. Responsibility to keep us entertained. And that, that happens sometimes. All right, Clifford, so it's our job to make sure Jim Carrey doesn't fucking die, okay? Hello, Ace. I'm on it. I'm on it. Text him right now. Yeah. <laughs> Dear Jim, loved you in the Grinch. <laughs> Jim Carrey has actually found himself a whole new source of enlightenment. He's actually come around because he he actually himself, just like you were saying, Jaime, he had a lot of shit he was dealing with. He was in a serious depression, and somehow he found his way out, you know, which is uh, a miracle. And anytime somebody comes out of a real deep depression, I think that is some kind of a miracle. And well, it, it helps to stay off the fucking drugs. That's for sure. That's don't get very dude, true. But I don't people think on the I, they're internet doing it. don't get on antidepressants. No, nah, not at all. At they're, all. They're doing a toxicology report to see if Robin Williams had anything in his bloodstream, but I don't think uh, I don't think that was the case. Um, I watched a quick little clip that said that he was last with his wife in his home, last seen, uh, you know, ten thirty p.m. August tenth. And then, uh, wow. and then again, uh, you know, she had left for the day or something the next morning. Then she came back eleven fifty eight or something. Made the phone call to nine one one. They came over there within five minutes. He was pronounced dead at twelve o two p.m. August eleventh. God damn, dude! What she, the, the fuck? Yeah, the call was for uh, for a male in in his home, um, not breathing. You know, so was he boozing? What was he doing? Because when you asphyxiate like that and you die, is either you choke on your own vomit or you just stop breathing over um, an overdose of like opiates? Yeah, and that's shit weird. With alcohol it or a physical tool too. Yeah, I didn't say it, wow. it had made no mention of any kind of yeah. a physical apparatus for you know if he had what choked, the fuck? if he had hung himself or something like that, because that would be extremely obvious but right now they're saying alleged suicide but you know let's not even let's not go into all that let's talk about how awesome robin williams <sighs> was because dude dude well, i mean hook. the minute the minute hook. i saw it i was like nah you know right. it's like an top internet of the, host. top of the dome favorite robin's williams movie my favorite robin's williams movie robin williams movies mrs doubtfire kyle go say a different one it's either jumanji or hook Ed, or Jaime, go. Uh, Stay okay, my favorite, my favorite funny one was Hook, but my favorite serious one, What Dreams May Come. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wait, what? My Cliff, myself, toys. 
Toys. Oh, toys, dude. Wow. Classic. Nice with toys, dude. But how dude. can you be? I wait, 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 hold on. Job. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Cuba Gooden Jr. Oh. He made it. He made, dude, he was wait. good in that movie. No, he wasn't. That was LL Cool J. Oh, what? <laughs> Rob, Rob, Rob <laughs> what dreams may come. Oh, Cuba Gooden Jr. <laughs> <laughs> what, trips, what trips me out, I know, I know, keep it alive, but I mean, uh, what dreams may come, it's a beautiful movie, but the whole idea dealt with, you know, depression and suicide and all that stuff too, but I mean, again, this is this is a guy who kept us all laughing. Good morning, Vietnam. Yeah. You got Mrs. Doubtfire. Even the stand-up comedies, dude. Oh, Live at the Met. Awesome. Live yes. at the Met. Dude, half the time his hands on his freaking crutch. I actually liked Robin Williams for his actual comical He's quick. act, too. Yeah. He was fucking amazing, dude. Super quick. He, he was, was like, sweating. I don't know. He was you like, haven't seen Kaka like this. Dude, he was like the, the white Eddie Murphy. <laughs> it was awesome. Dude. I buy that. I buy that. He was actually really dirty in yeah, some of his stand He was. But hold on. I just want to say that there are only a handful of movies that I actually cry when I watch them. And which one did you cry in? My Girl. No, well, I'm talking uh, about Robin Williams oh, okay, movies. Don't tell me. Pat, don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> was he in that? <laughs> don't tell me Patch Adam. Not the piece. You know what, dude? Sadly, I've never seen that movie. What? I've never seen Patch oh, Adam's movie. I haven't seen it either. Yo, I hold, seen up, hold, up, hold, up, cry. hold up. Guaranteed. Can I can I get a can I get an amen for anybody who even if you guys are manly enough to admit that you held back tears during the movie Jack? Oh my god. Can I get an amen? So I forgot about Jack. Can I, I get an amen? So sad. Amen, dude. I can't amen. even think about Jack right now. Like I I, I Dude, Jack was Dude, that sad movie is mother. fucked up. Man. You don't remember Jack, dude? Oh. Jaime does I, not remember. I Jack. remember. I remember the movie came out, but at the time I was I was staying straight away from. He Rob graduates Williams at the high time. school. He's all like seventy five, and he's like, <laughs> "I got the new Airwalks." They're all like freaking red suede and like, <sighs> dude. dude. Must you remind me of? Jack. All right, so I got a, a movie on my list now. All right, which dude, one? You have Jack. to watch. I haven't seen. Well, Jack. dude, you got to watch it alone too. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the Jack was wine. basically like the anti um, uh, Benjamin Button. It was. It's true. It was the reverse, up, but it came out first. It was a grown adult as a kid. Yeah. Okay, I remember a little yeah. bit, but yeah, I gotta catch. It that, was man. fucked up, man. Like I was just like, why am I watching this? And I couldn't stop fucking watching it on VHS too. Oh god. On VHS, on VHS, you're right. VHS. Fuck, man. Dude, because it came out in what late nineties. All the Robin Williams classics were on VHS, oh, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> let's let's see if we can get it. Chrono- chronologically correct. Oh my god, dude! First, without googling, first without googling, let's do this thing. Don't cheat, Cl- Cliff. Cliff's Cliff's on it, but it's all right. Cliff's actually really good with this kind of thing. Okay, let's go first. What do you guys think was like the first Robin Williams movie? Let's try to move chronologically. <sighs> Shit, the first okay. really good. It was sure he did Dead a lot of Poet small. Society. No. Good morning Vietnam. Yeah, that's the only one. one. Good morning Vietnam. Okay. Okay. The first one that I knew about was Dead Poet Society. Probably that yeah. probably came. That was oh, like ninety one. After Good Morning Vietnam, it that was, was like ninety. Jesus Christ, dude. I'm usually good at this shit. But I do remember, um, okay, Dead Poet Society. That was a great fucking film. Wasn't uh, Brendan Fraser in that one? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, right? He was one of the guys in the society. I think it was Jimmy Stewart. What year (laughs) did Mrs. Doubtfire come out? Here's a folk guy, Calgary. That was 94, yeah. Okay, let's, let's go. Let's roll with that. Hook was like right in the same era. Hook was like ninety. It was also ninety. Hook was that was the worst misuse of feathered hair on an adult. Okay, keep them rolling. Insurance claim. Okay, not (laughs) not necessarily a a classic Robin Williams movie, but he was crucial to the film. Goodwill Hunting. Oh, yeah, yeah, man, he was crucial. With the hood ass guys from uh, Boston. He was a pivot. man. Ben Affleck. You remember one hour photo? Oh, oh dude. God! Yeah, creeper, my creeper son. Wait, what was that all about? Yeah. He was a he, he was a he creepy was the bad guy ass photo photographer that would, would def- like try to get involved in the clients' lives that would give him pictures. Oh, is this a suspense would, movie? Yeah, yeah it's dude, a thriller, and he was dude. like a pedophile. Yeah, yeah it was, wait a minute, it was deep. Didn't he do a suspense movie with Al Pacino? Yeah, Insomnia. what was it called? Insomnia. There we yeah. go. That no was more shit. early two thousands. I remember <laughs> that one. That was fucking great. They were in the woods and shit. Back what, to the nineties. What bothered me? Oh, I said, I couldn't sleep. <laughs> it bothered me. I had to catch Robin Williams somewhere there. <laughs> that was the problem. In Alaska, hard to do it. That's definitely Al Pacino later in life. Oh, my 
God. That's when a he problem. was younger, yeah. his voice was way different. Did you Cliff, notice Cliff, that? In Cliff, Godfather yeah. 2? Cliff hit the young Al Pacino. Wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna get, um, I I'm, have to figure out what's going on with the Godfather. And um, I have to figure out what's going on with my voice. I would change it into a hoo-ha. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hit you guys with a bomb. A huge bomb. I have never watched any of the Godfather movies. Damn. Really, really, really. Wait, wait, wait. Really, really, None. really, 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 None. really? Wait. What? I say you only Why are you fist bumping? You neither. Oh. Are you Power Rangers over here? Dude. Oh, my God. I have yet to watch one. I haven't either. May your first child be a masculine child. Watch those fucking movies, dude. Uh, I watched Scarface. I watched... Dude, all um, I gotta say is Godfather 2 is freaking epic as a mo. Listen to this guy. Okay. Uh, that's I need to watch epic. it in chronological order, right? One and two, three is like throwaway. Yeah, like three, but one and two for to sure. Bring it back, different people. That is was it, like the is it, go- that is was it gory? Sofia Coppola, right? Yeah. So, is yeah. it gory? No. Uh, uh, yeah. For it its time, nice. it's cool, dude. Don't stress. But it's pretty G. It's G, dude. It's G as you can get. It's Come Italian. So epic, dude. It's good. It's good. oh man, dude. Watch it. We're missing out, Kyle. We need a movie two. night. Makes you excited about going to weddings. You know, wow. you want to go to a wedding. Wow. Just be there with fucking people who are like, come on in, bring them, bring them. Yeah, but Leave number three is so hey, if you guys like love cinema, number three is almost a joke compared Really? To. I've heard that. Wow. It's totally different. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Watch it. Watch one and two. Do it yeah. now. How about uh how about we play another Vigester song? Ooh, wait, hold on. No, 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 not yet. You know? Not yet. I okay. want to finish this Robin Williams thing. Okay. Late nineties, early two thousands. All right. Dude. We, AI? We said what, uh, AI. 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 Bicentennial Man was before that, Dude. right? Dude. Bicentennial Man. Moaning farts um, in the bed. He's a... <laughs> oh, Flubber. Flubber! <laughs> oh, shit. Dude. Shit. Oh, my God. Oh, who could forget Aladdin? Aladdin. He was a fucking genie, dude. You know what, though? You know what, though? That that movie Prince is Ali, probably you might. see Ali Ababa. Strong as ten regular men take it from me. <laughs> probably my favorite Disney movie of Hell all yeah. time. Aladdin? Because of Robin Williams, no joke. Wow. He's great. He's great as a genie, man. And the guy in the in the second Aladdin who tried to ro- Robin Williams it, was it up. was the guy who did the voice of Homer. He was all right. Dan, uh, Dan, Kesselnetta? Dan Kesselnetta? Yeah. 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 That yeah was he, the guy who replaced he was all right. He didn't quite get it, but he was all right. Whose voice was he? Who? In Aladdin, the genie. Yeah, the second one didn't have. Uh, oh, Robin Dan Robin Kessel Kessel did it. Role. Yeah, yeah, in the sequels. I did not know that. I don't think I've watched any of the sequels. Straight to the. I still have those big white fucking VHSs. They're oh, like no the size sh- of fucking like package you, meat and you shit. You still have the old Little Mermaid cases with the big penises as the yeah. tower oh, behind them. Oh my god, dude! Yeah. It's not good. Let's not get into the Disney stuff. Oh, that alone is pretty tricky. All right, so two thousands Robin Williams. 2000. God damn. He was in Wilfred, the th- I think third season. I saw him in that. That's Wolf recent. Ridden? Yeah. Just it's very oh recent. That was one of his most recent roles. That's okay. right. That's right. He only was in one episode. Sorry, guys. I'm going to break the rules and I'm going to pull up the IMDb. Oh, that was quick. You busted a Joe Rogan. <laughs> hey, guys, look it up. <laughs> my name's Joe Rogan. Yeah, I kind of talk his... like this all the time. I'm always talking about Cox. I'm just talking about oh. right on the button. Right on the button. He hit him right on the button. Yeah, it that's is, right, cocksucker. It is all over. Right on the button. <laughs> I love Eddie Bravo because he smokes weed with me. Dude, you guys realize this podcast, I'm probably going to edit this out, but <laughs> it is like over like an hour and 30 minutes already. It's supposed to be edited. Yeah, is, but, all is you amazing. do it is all you do is edit we, the... We went from 30 minutes to an hour and 30. All you do is... This uh, is pure gold. You guys are interesting. What do you want me to do? <laughs> We've been talking about this for so long. Look, I'll shut the fuck up. You need me to shut the fuck up. Are you really pulling up IMDb? <sighs> did you just fart? No, I did not. Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, do you guys want to jump into uh, craft beer after this? Yeah, let's, we don't need to talk about that. It's already long. Upcoming concerts. What uh, draft beer were you talking about? I don't know. We already have enough. Are we you guys ready? A lot of content. Are you guys ready? I'm still ready. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna go over this real quick. If you guys want to say something, you know, as a side note about your experience or what you remember about the film and how it affected you in your life, then hey. go ahead. Okay, so all right, we, we who mentioned Awakenings earlier? Oh, um, I did. Cliff. That was uh, Cliff. Supposedly, he had Parkinson's. That's why he killed himself. Very interesting. Yeah, and really, that, and that was a movie where he played a a doctor. I guess it was his most serious role in his whole career. 
And it was a doctor who uh, administered medicine to Parkinson's patients. What? Ironically. Okay, we're going to test Cliff's amazing uh, skills wow. of, of uh, knowing time. <laughs> Wait, what year was that? That was 1990. Fucking, how do you do that, dude? Seriously? It's fucking, look at right here. It's, it's 1990. Oh, wow. This motherfucker. All right. Um, this motherfucker. All right. <laughs> Fern Gully. Oh my god. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Wait, not the Did original. Did I just say that? Not the original. Fern the la- the last rainforest. He no, was- that is the original. Oh, is, is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my bad. I never That's fucking the seen name it. of it. <laughs> he, was the, he was the voice of Batty Coda. That was 1993. He <laughs> got that one right. Some slipping, but just by a year. Oh, 92. 92. Man. Jeez. You're All better, right. You're better at it than I am, dude. All right. What the fuck's it. wrong with us? Mrs. Doubtfire. 94. Hello! 93. 93. You're not off yeah. by much. All right. Um, Tu Wong Fu. Thanks, thanks for, for everything. everything. Julie Numa. That was 96. Uncredited. John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. What the fuck? Oh, His name is my uh, name, too. Remember Jacob's Ladder, too? That was a good <laughs> movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, The Birdcage. <laughs> oh, oh, Nathan Lane. <laughs> Nathan Lane and Rob Williams. Dude, I'm dude. Gonna, Kyle, I'm going to guess 97. My watermelon list, my natural list. 96. <laughs> you're, you're giving him one extra year, but maybe these were released oh, later in the year. Dude. I'm cutting you some slack. You're doing good. Wow. You're doing good, kid. Wow. Uh, apparently, he was in some kind of a remake of Hamlet, which has been redone like fucking a million times. Yes, he was. He was in. Um, I saw him in gonna, high school. I remember. I'm gonna give this one to Jaime. Uh, what year for what dreams may come? Oh, geez, uh, 98. Fucking nailed it, dude! Wow. wow, I love that movie, dude. Hold on, <laughs> you guys are gonna love this. He actually got paid enough, apparently, or maybe he just loves kids to do Aladdin's Math Quest video game in 98. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and two plus two is four. Uh, Jacob the Liar. What the fuck? Jacob I remember the they liar. showed that in school. You guys oh, that? when I said Jacob's Ladder, I meant Jacob the Liar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ja- you're thinking Tim Robbins and Jacob's Ladder. That's a different movie. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Hold on. This is a good one. This is his movie that he, he did just before Insomnia. With, oh, I'm going to give you guys some clues. With Edward Norton. Oh, uh, shit. Dark, he, dark it, comedy. Oh, oh, oh uh, Death to Smoochie. Death to Smoochie. Death to Smoochie. Oh, oh, man. That's an dude. awesome movie. That's Catch movie, it, dude. Yeah. It's great. Oh, man. I think I've watched a little bit of it. I need to watch it all the way through. Yeah, come yeah. on. It's a good movie. <laughs> okay, he kind of faded out a little bit. He wasn't in quite any any hits, but he uh, he did Robots. He was the voice of Fender. Remember in 2005, Robots? That was a cool yeah, movie. Yeah, I remember I that. didn't get to see Robots. I dug that movie. That was cool. Very cool uh, oh. graphic animation movie. Uh, the Night Listener, whatever the hell that was. The no. Night Listener. Anybody remember that? No. Uh, he was in a family movie called RV. I remember RV. RV. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, what about that movie with like Martin Lawrence? Martin and, Lawrence. Um, wasn't he in that with John Travolta, Martin Lawrence, and... Uh, was it Wild Hogs? Yeah, Wild Hogs. Yeah. Wild Hogs. Oh, dude. Wait, hold on. <laughs> old Dogs or Wild oh, Hogs? Old Dogs. Old Dogs. dogs. That was go. actually funny. And but, they were like, mo- they were riding on motorcycles and shit? I never saw it. Dude, yeah. it's funny. Never it was it. totally a family comedy. Really uh, cheesy. Kind of like uh, Grown Ups. Okay. Uh, except more cheesier. <laughs> with Tim Allen. some Velveeta on that. <laughs> okay, I'm going to wrap this up real quick. He was in a movie called Man of the Year. In 2006, he was like a politician or something. Yeah, man of the year. Happy feet. Looks like he, he was, was, uh, he was one of the penguins. Name he his had last cool, three movies. He had the cool eyebrows. Went before oh, oh yeah. Huh. Not quite so there yet. Happy. <laughs> Night, of the, Night at the Museum. Oh, okay. he, oh was, he was t- Teddy Roosevelt. He was Teddy yeah, Roosevelt. That's right. Very Teddy. nice. Uh, August Rush. August he Rush. He was the, the pimp. Wait, hold on. What? The music yeah. pimp. Yeah, the music pimp. <laughs> he was That's the music what he pimp, was, and he was getting August to play mm-hmm. when he wanted him to play. I never saw money. I never saw that movie, but when people hear my solo CD, they're like, oh, you sound like August Rush. I'm like, I've never seen it. It's like, I, you I got it on beta? <laughs> you got it on beta? Okay. I'm break or it down for you right download. now. I'm breaking it down for you right now. His last five years of film. World's Greatest Dad. Night at the Museum, Battle of the Smithsonian, Old Dogs, Happy Feet 2, thank God they made that sequel, Wilfred, <laughs> Louis, The Big Wedding, The Butler, The Face of Love, 
the crazy ones. What the fuck? Boulevard. Yeah, a lot of movies no one really heard of. The Angriest Man in Brooklyn. That actually mm. is a good title. I, Night at the Museum, The Secret of the Tomb. There's a third? There's yeah, a third I one? think there's a third installment. There's yeah, it one. was total B-movie cast. I think it was a porno softcore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi. Um, is it past closing hours? Cinemax. And a movie that everyone will see in 2015 because it's posthumous for Mr. Robin Williams. A movie entitled Absolutely Anything where Robin Williams entertains the world as the voice of Dennis the dog. Wow. <laughs> that is fucking amazing. Dude, I'll see it. For, for a few final laughs. I love ducks. From the man with the golden heart and the golden sense of wow. humor. Wow. That was a boss. That, dude. All right. Rest in peace, man. Fucking Robin Williams. Rest in peace. Thank you. It's a shame, but fuck, man. Dude, dude what can you do? Movie. His life is going to last what more can you than do? This, this tragic stuff, man. It's good. All you can do this is guy. mourn their, their death and... That's and celebrate their life. Celebrate yeah. their life, man. Keep in mind, that's Levin. Jumanji! Oh, yeah, Jumanji. I didn't hear Jumanji once. I'm just going to be go out there and say that, you know? All right, before we wrap up, um, just a reminder, um, we are going to some gigs. We're going to go see Soundgarden and Nine Inch Nails. Yeah. Um, so we'll talk about that probably in the next podcast. Let's see how it goes. Well, let's talk about our some of our upcoming things that we got. Well, what do you, what do you guys? What do you guys got? I didn't ask you we that. We got three shows coming up. One at the Doll Hut in Anaheim. Doll Hut in Anaheim, on August twenty seventh, a Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday, August twenty seventh, September twelfth, Foundation Room, which is in the House of Blues above the main stage. Yeah, and in Hollywood. It's a Friday, yeah. Okay, just for for internet life, internet land. If you guys don't know, the House of Blues will be demolished. I think they got three years. No. I heard they got less than that. Really? Oh, yeah. fuck. So this is your chance to go not only uh, see Vizester play, but enjoy the the venue. Why? I thought it was successful. Well, they want to demolish that whole... Pl- the whole. Uh, oh, it's going to move somewhere else? No, they're going to build it in there. What they're ge- they're looking to do is build that area like the next Times Square, like in, uh, in New York. Good so luck. there's a big... Uh, plan to build like this massive like shopping center Why? insurance claim but, but i did but i did hear from um a good friend of mine that they're planning on moving it which is ridiculous why are you gonna move the house of blues out of hollywood because money talks man. Yes. okay and then our next show is uh september 26th at Petey's place in tarzana and that's on a friday okay and then our new uh ep probably about five or six song album Will probably be released, and I'd say about November. Yep, definitely before the end of the year. Is it definitely. gonna be like Chinese democracy? <laughs> God, no, I hope in that not. case, it would come out in twenty twenty, <laughs> <laughs> and then it will be a, a de- it, it'll be delayed by like thirty days, which <laughs> technically makes it twenty twenty one. But hold on, though, hold on. Uh, we will be doing a radio performance. For um, UCLA Radio, UCLA Radio, we're very excited about this. All you Westwood heads, enjoy, motherfuckers. Go Bruins! And we're going to be performing live in their studio at the college on nice. campus. Um, enjoy Westwood, by the way. That's going to be on September seventh. I September will. September seventh. It's, it's, it's Sunday uh, night. September seventh. It should be very fun. Yes, it's it's a big opportunity for us. We're excited. The show is called the Bloop. The DJ is Doctor No. It's called the Bloop. The oh, DJ is Doctor No. Shout out to Doctor No. Interesting, Doctor No. Nice. Well, any last words before we sign off, gentlemen? <laughs> it's been a fun night. Out. It's been a fun night, and uh, you know we're gonna miss Robin Williams absolutely, and we're gonna probably be in contact with whatever appears in the sky. I like we'll that. Talk about more aliens, uh, yeah. and we'll continue to challenge Clifford on movie trivia. Uh, Because he's pretty badass, and Jaime will just continue to impersonate Mexican people. And Al Pacino. (laughs) 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 Tell me again about that. Well, UFO. For the Namrock Podcast, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls all over the internet, uh, this is Namrock signing off with Vi Jester. We'll leave you guys off with another song. This is off of the EP Cognizance. I'll let you guys choose this one. This next song is players of paradox we have a music video for it on youtube you guys check it out thanks for listening all right peace out see you guys next time
Is it my own? 